Granny Hiff and Kit Guru have arrived back from Computex and sitting on my doorstep was a nice brand new keyboard from Corsair. Uh, they didn't have these keyboards on display there at the event so it was a little bit of a nice surprise. Uh, so they've recently updated their K17 Mark II and I've got the Strafe Mark II to take a look at. It's got the same suggested retail price as the previous Strafe so it's £149 here in the UK. Um, however obviously the previous Strafe is available for quite a bit cheaper than that now as it is sort of like the older version. I have actually used a strafe in the past so I've got a little bit of an experience with it um, and I'll do my best in this video to sort of compare this new Mark II version to the previous strafe and see if Corsair have made some worthwhile improvements. To me, the design of the Mark II looks pretty much the same as the previous Strafe keyboard. It's big, square and black. Uh, it looks very similar to the K70 or the K95. Uh, Corsair have updated it slightly though. They've put a strip of aluminium across the top and they've also included a Corsair RGB logo. So the keyboard does overall look a little bit more premium. The sides of the Mark II are now uh, finished in like a matte black. I know on the previous strafe it did have some like white paint along the sides which I think did look a little bit odd in comparison to the black body. Uh, however of course they have kept the nice sort of white LED strip that runs along the side. The body of the keyboard is still plastic like the previous version, however for a plastic keyboard I think it has a really good weight to it and it does feel sturdy and well built. The underside has two small plastic flip out feet to adjust the height. I like that they flip out sideways as it means they're sort of less prone to like flicking down when you move the keyboard around. However, unfortunately they are just made of sort of like a thin plastic and they don't have any rubber pads on them. So I think this keyboard does actually slide around on the desk quite easily and doesn't really sit still as well as it should do. Like the previous strafe, the Mark II does come with a removable wrist rest. Uh, that definitely ticks the box with me. I think it's good if a keyboard comes with a wrist rest. Um, and it's good that it's removable as well if you don't like using them. Um, unfortunately, it is made of like a sort of like thin uh, black plastic, which isn't really the prettiest. Um, however, it is coated in this uh, soft touch material that I did find nice and comfy. The main difference to the Mark II is what Corsair has sort of done to this top area. I know on the previous strafe it was just sort of like a lot of empty space that was just like black plastic, uh, but they have really sort of updated it. I think they sort of unified the design over all of their high-end keyboards. It looks very similar to my K95 or the updated K17 Mark II. It, they've all got the same sort of aluminium strip and the same set of buttons and the same sort of RGB logo. So the three buttons on the left hand side, there's one that changes the brightness between four different settings, there's a Windows lock key and there's also a button on there which allows you to change between uh, three different profiles on the fly and this keyboard does have onboard memory so those profiles can be stored on there sort of like wherever you go. On the right hand side this keyboard now features dedicated media keys which is a really big plus. It's something the previous strafe was missing so I think Corsair have obviously listened to a little bit of user feedback and gone why not let's just put some uh, media, uh, dedicated media buttons on this keyboard. Uh, they are nice to use, they feel really good to press um, and yeah they do the job nicely. There's also a scroll, like a volume scroll wheel on there and also a volume mute button as well. The scroll wheel it glides really nicely, it is free flowing so it doesn't have any sort of like tactile bumps but I find it really sort of like quick and easy to change the volume. The cable is nice and thick and braided. This is definitely an improvement over the previous strafe that just had sort of like a plain uh, black plastic cable. So this one feels like it's a lot more sort of like durable and hard wearing and just looks nicer as well. Um, the reason the cable is so thick is because this keyboard does have a USB uh, 2.0 pass through. Uh, it's something that was on the previous strafe so I'm glad that Corsair have kept it on the new updated Mark II. I find them like really handy just for quickly plugging in a USB stick or even like charging my phone up as well. The keycaps are still made of the same sort of like ABS plastic so if you are a fan of PBT keycaps you will have to pay the extra £40 to buy them from Corsair separately. However this keyboard does still come up with a set of replacement keycaps for SPF and MOBA players. They're sort of like grey and textured and I think they just add a nice extra bit of customization. The keys themselves are slightly raised off the body of the keyboard and this new updated strafe still has the same nice white backing as the previous strafe that really helps those RGB LEDs stand out. 
The Strafe is still sort of like the quiet keyboard in Corsair's lineup. It's available with either Cherry MX Red switches or on my sample, I've got the Cherry MX Silent Mechanical switches. Both the red switches and the silent switches are linear, so they are definitely quieter than their like clicky tactile cousins. Uh, however, I don't think the silent switches are fully silent, uh, but they are definitely the quietest to use out of the Cherry MX line. On the Mark II though, I did find that the space bar was noticeably louder than sort of like the rest of the switches. The silent switches and the red switches feel almost identical. They have exactly the same actuation force and a very, very similar actuation distance. I find them really great for sort of like gaming on. However, I really wish this cable was available on at least one tactile switch option, so like blues or browns. Um, its predecessor was available with the option of tactile switches, which I find better for typing on. Also good to mention, if you are a gamer, this keyboard of course has 100% anti-ghosting and full NQ rollover as well, so you'll find that every key press is going to register exactly as it should. The RGB lighting on this keyboard is absolutely beautiful. I don't think Corsair updated it from the previous strafe and they didn't really need to, to be honest, because that was one of the standout features. Um, yeah, everything's fully customizable. Uh, everything lights up as well, like the shortcut keys, the logo, the media keys. Yeah, everything can be changed. There's loads of different sort of uh, lighting effects to choose from. And thanks to that white backing, it looks really nice and bright. The lighting can't be customised on the keyboard itself, uh, you do have to do it using the Corsair IQ software. I've spoken about previously how much I like the software, I find it really easy and intuitive to use, it also provides plenty of different options. Uh, the IQ is like an updated version um, and it has also recently had another update as well, so I find it much smoother and sort of less buggy to use. So yeah, it definitely gives a lot of different options. I'm basically going to jump in the software, do a quick overview, uh, just for those of you that might not have seen about me talking about it in previous videos. So um, yeah, the lighting effects option, uh, you've got a load of different presets on there, uh, absolutely loads and loads. Uh, most of them look absolutely fantastic. I've got an Inspire Rainbow because it's just like the crazy rainbow one. Um, you can obviously like customize your own. Um, you can also use lighting links to link up all your other peripherals and your PC now as well. The IQ software works with like your fans and everything. Um, yeah, so yeah, loads of different ones to choose from, loads of different options, you can layer them up, etc. Um, everything is controllable individually, so like each half of the uh, logo. Um, you can even change the colour of like the shortcut keys, the media keys. Yeah, loads of customization. I just, yeah, I love the Corsair software when it comes to lighting. Um, the performance tab uh, gives you options on what to control when you press the Windows lock key. So not only can you disable the Windows lock key, it can also disable like Alt tab, Alt F4, uh, Shift tab, etc. Um, you can change the lock indicator colours. Uh, you can enable the side lighting, so that's that white LED strip down the side. Uh, profile indicator colour, yeah, loads of different customization options. And then you've got the actions tab, so this is where you can create macros. And um, there's loads of different ones to choose between, so yeah, macros, you can create text, so you can like copy and paste text in, you don't have to type everything out. You can just remap a key, you can change it to a media key, you can get it to launch applications, uh, start a timer. Yeah, there's basically anything you can imagine to do, you can do with like creating a macro on the software and um, it's really great and then there's the like profiles um tab so you can see like the three onboard profiles on this keyboard um, and then you can see the ones that i've got sort of set up on my pc uh for different like i've got a rendering one because it turns all the lights off and makes my fans go really fast um, and yeah you can save any of those to the keyboard profile so if you go plug it into another pc it remembers your uh profile basically so you don't have to set up all the lighting again and um, but yeah really great piece of software it's also got like the settings and an, a new instant lighting feature that i think is new for iq so um yeah you can just click it and everything will turn to that color um yeah on the settings tab so this is where you can um 
change the polling rate, change the brightness, change the layout, um, and then update the firmware as well. Yeah, overall, a really nice piece of software. Can't complain about Corsair software. I think it's one, one of the main reasons, I think, to like buy their keyboard over a competitor is how much effort they put into their software. Overall, I do think that Corsair has definitely made some worthwhile improvements to the Mark II. It looks a lot prettier and it also has more functionality thanks to this dedicated media keys. Although though, at the end of the day, I do think it does provide the same sort of like typing and gaming experience. And therefore, I don't really think it's worth sort of like running out and buying the Mark II if you already own the current Strafe keyboard. However, if you are someone that is looking for a good keyboard that features the Trey MX silent switches, I've got no problem recommending the Strafe Mark II keyboard. I think it ticks plenty of boxes when it comes to functionality and software, and I found it comfortable and pleasant to use. I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on the K70 Mark II, as it looks nearly identical to the Strafe, but it does have that aluminium body. If you like this video from KitGuru, make sure to give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more from KitGuru, hit that subscribe button and remember to hit the bell icon as well so you can get a notification of whenever a new video goes live. Mm -hmm.